Hey guys, my name is Matumio, and welcome to another one of my vlog Q&As. Uh, this is a video series I like to do every so often, every couple of weeks, where I let you guys submit your questions, be them gaming related, you want to know a little bit more about me, YouTube related, and stuff like that, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. And so the first question for today comes from Thomas, and it is, have you seen the trailer Hatred, and if so, what are your thoughts on it? Oh boy, uh, yes, I have seen the trailer for Hatred, but if you're in the dark and you've never heard of this title, essentially what it boils down to is that you are playing as this individual who hates the world. He hates everyone in it, he wants to rid the world of humanity, and so he has created his mission for himself that he's gonna go out into the streets of Detroit, we don't really actually know where it's set, and murder everyone he comes across. Civilians, policemen, it's brutal, he starts to shoot at people, they scream in terror, they're scared for their life, it's, it's, it's crazy. And of course, this has caused a ruckus amongst the, the gaming community. People are saying that this is pushing things too far, why developers would you ever create a game like like this and just stop it like what the hell were you thinking who knows maybe it will have an amazing story component of it maybe it will have this great message at the end that promotes non-violent acts not sure how they'd be able to pull that off but that could be the case but at least from what we've seen so far this is just shock value tactics to sell more copies of this game it's a top-down shooter, I should have mentioned that, and if it was your standard top-down shooter where you're killing zombies or aliens like that sort uh, no one would be talking about this game. Sure, a couple of people would be excited about it, but nowhere near would it have the publicity that it has right now just simply because of this setting. This is what the game developers want, and I realize I'm being a little uh, hypocritical because I'm talking about it, but that's the reason, or I'm assuming that's one of the reasons why they created this game the way that they did. All of this being said, though, this sort of just comes with the territory of living in a free society. I mean, this is a radical game. It is on the fringe here, and I know a lot of us are right in the middle, but if we want to live in a free society and we want to promote free speech, this is just something that we kind of have to deal with. And, and if you don't want to support something like it, then of course just don't go out and buy it. And I think the reason why so many gamers are upset by this is because we're tired of the mass media blaming gaming in general for the violence that happens in the world. It's like violence didn't happen just 20 years ago. It's been happening since the dawn of time. And I think there's actually a statistic that uh, since games have come out, violence overall has decreased. I'm not saying that's causation because I'm not as absurd as the mass media, but that could be something that we should look at. And so when a mass shooting happens, I, I hope it never happens. I mean, who? no one wants that. But I know that if it does occur and this game comes out, Fox News, for example, is going to jump all over. They're going to be like, hey, there's this game that literally has you go out and kill civilians. That is the point of the game. This kid played that title, hubba bubba da This is the reason why we have violence in the United States. I'm tired of it. I know that a lot of you guys are tired of it. And so I think that is the biggest issue that a lot of gamers have. But uh, for me personally, I'm not going to pick up this title. I, I can see why it's being made, I get it that it's shock value, and honestly, I, I can't really say that they can't make it because of free speech. And if I want to live in a world where we have free speech, we live in a free society, we got to take the good with the quote-unquote bad, and uh, I think the really the biggest thing, if you do not want to support a title like this, is just simply uh, don't go out and buy it. The next question for the day comes from Mr. Pikachu, and it is, if you were stuck in a zombie apocalypse, what weapon would you choose? That is a fun question. Uh, I'm not a gun nut, so I don't really know how a lot of weapons perform in the real world, but from what I've heard, the AK-47 would be amazing in the zombie apocalypse. That thing can go underwater, you can dunk it in sand, you can, you can do whatever you want with it, and it's still going to work. It is one of the most reliable weapons, I think, in the world. It's the reason why we see it in so many different environments from Africa, you see it in the Middle East, every in the, everywhere in the world you see AK-47s because they're an incredibly reliable gun. And since we're in a zombie apocalypse and anything can happen, I mean, you're not gonna be able to have a clean gun 100% of the time, I think I would want a weapon that is gonna be able to be reliable. Like if a bunch of zombies come around the corner and my gun jams or there's some issue with it, that's gonna be the difference between life and death. 
I did think about some other guns, like uh, maybe a light machine gun. I mean, that would be amazing, just mowing them down as they come. But those aren't very mobile. You're going to have to hunker down. You're going to basically have to stay in that one spot. And so if you need to move very quickly, if they get the flank off on you and they get into your house, you're not going to be able to carry the light machine, light machine gun with you. I also thought of a sniper. A sniper rifle of some sort take things out at long range, so it's hard for them to identify where you are. Um, but I think if I really had to pick, I would go with uh, the AK-47. The next question for today comes from David, and it is, What is your favorite television show this last year? Uh, well, I'm someone who has noticed that I don't really enjoy uh, cable television anymore. So like CSI, you got your shows like uh, Castle, for example, because while they can be entertaining every so often, I have a hard time investing in those shows because the entire plot of one episode concludes in that episode. And while they do have like an overarching theme throughout this season, so if you're watching Castle, Beckett and Castle's romance brews and they, they have that witty banter that goes back and forth, and that's fantastic. But I'm more into shows that uh, have a story that c constantly progresses throughout the season. Everything is constantly changing and, and compounding on itself. And you have some really great character progression. And so I would say that my top shows that I've seen this year are, uh, of course, uh, Game of Thrones. That's easily one of my favorites. And uh, True Detective. I, I just ordered it on Netflix a couple of months ago. And I was blown away by that show. The performances were phenomenal. The story was fantastic. Matthew McConaughey just nailed it out of the park. And so if I had to choose, I think I would have to go uh, with True Detective. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is about it for today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed. I did want to let you know before I go that I am going out of town next week for a couple of days. I am trying to create as many videos as I can before I leave, so I have videos still posting while I don't have access to my computer. But if I do miss a day and there isn't a video, I just want to let you guys know uh, that is the reason why. Uh, but until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.